A high-speed rail ticket can be sold for 800 yuan. Why is China Railway still in debt of 6 trillion yuan? Could it be that 1.4 billion people cannot afford to support China Railway? In this video, let us learn more about it. It is very reasonable to say that if a country wants to become rich, it must first build roads. After all, if there are no channels to connect with the outside world, it will be difficult for the economy to connect, and it will be difficult for the country to develop. China's rapid development over the past few decades is inseparable from China's emphasis on road infrastructure. Today, the total length of China's railways has exceeded 150,000 kilometers, and the total mileage of high-speed rail ranks first in the world. But what you may not know is that China Railway has been operating at a loss. Can't 1.4 billion Chinese people afford China Railway? Why does this happen? China Railway has been losing money for many years. In the first half of 2022 alone, its losses reached 80.4 billion yuan. China's high-speed rail fares are cheap and passenger traffic is huge. Why can't it afford China Railway, which has been losing money for years? China has always been a country with a very large population base, with a population of more than 1.4 billion. During the spring festival travel season alone, railway passenger traffic is already huge. In addition, in recent years, high-speed rail has gradually entered people's daily life and has become the preferred mode of transportation for Chinese people to go out and travel across provinces. The passenger flow is so huge that during peak periods it is even difficult to get a ticket. No matter how we look at it, we should not lose money. Anyone who has bought high-speed rail tickets at a Chinese station must know that there is a huge flow of people at the station, especially during holidays like the Spring Festival and Mid-Autumn Festival, when it can be said that it is hard to get a ticket. According to statistics, China's railways carry 1.05 billion passengers every year, which shows that railways have a very high utilization rate in China. Just in 2020, 12 of China's 18 railway bureaus suffered serious losses, and their total liabilities that year were as high as 560 million yuan. By 2022, the situation has still not improved. Relevant data released by China Railway Group in the first half of the year stated that China Railway's total debt has reached 6 trillion yuan. Many people don't understand this situation. Obviously, the ticket price can be as high as 800 yuan at times, and there is a huge flow of people every year. Why is there a loss? What are the reasons? First, let's analyze the reasons from a macro perspective. China's railways are different from many European and American countries. Many railways in European and American countries have a history of hundreds of years. After a long period of construction and coverage, it has reached today's scale. Most of the railways built in these capitalist countries are invested by chables, and all the profits gained after the final operation are also in the hands of chables. Now that a hundred years have passed, many railways in these countries have already passed the loss-making stage and have begun to move towards a period of balance and profitability. Compared with this, China's railways are fundamentally different. This is because New China was only established in 1949, and only then did the government vigorously carry out urban and railway construction. It was not until 1952 that China's first railway, the Chengdu Chongqing Railway, was successfully opened to traffic. In the following decades, the Chinese government spared no effort to develop railway coverage across the country. Today, China's total railway operating mileage has reached 146,000 kilometers, 
of which high-speed rail covers 38,000 kilometers, ranking first in the world. Because of this, China has been dubbed the infrastructure maniac, but many people don't know that behind this title are the countless hardships and large amounts of capital investment China has made in a short period of time. China's railway construction is a national project entirely initiated by the government and invested by state-owned enterprises. It is completely different from the concept of chable monopoly in European and American countries. So where does this money come from? Can the government and central enterprises afford so much money? Of course we can't get it out, most of it comes from bank loans. So how much does it cost to build the railway? There is indeed a statistic. Taking high-speed rail as an example, its average cost per kilometer is as high as 150 million yuan. Today, the country's high-speed rail coverage area is 38,000 kilometers. So why are railways in China so expensive? The most fundamental reason is that the construction cost of high-speed rail is high. Not to mention the cost of carriages and various facilities, railway construction alone is very expensive. In addition to the construction cost, the subsequent maintenance is also not a small sum. Secondly, China's terrain features are very complex, with the terrain being higher in the west and lower in the east, roughly distributed in a ladder shape. There are the Lus Plateau, where the soil is soft and difficult to build railways, the Yunnan Guizhou Bashu region, which is extremely rugged and mountainous, and the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, which is along the Qinghai Tibet Railway with an average altitude of over 4,500 meters. Building railways in these places means greater costs. To balance the impact of terrain and soil quality on the railway, the project is larger and more difficult, and of course it costs more. Take the Qinghai Tibet Plateau as an example. Because the plateau is covered with patches of dangerous frozen soil, it is easy for thermal expansion and contraction with changes in temperature to affect the expansion of soil under the railway, causing safety hazards. Therefore, the engineering staff spent a lot of energy and money, at any cost, to install 100,000 hot rods in the frozen soil areas involved in the Qinghai Tibet Railway, which is enough to ensure that the frozen soil remains unchanged all year round and the railway driving safety. Of course, losses have intensified in recent years, which also include some special reasons. The most intuitive aspect is reflected in the huge impact the outbreak and prolongation of the new coronavirus epidemic has had on railways. According to statistics, before the outbreak of the epidemic in 2019, the annual net profit of the Beijing-Shanghai high-speed railway alone was as high as 11.9 billion yuan. However, after the epidemic, this profit figure dropped year by year. By the first half of 2022, its revenue was sluggish, reaching only 7.928 billion yuan, a year-on-year -year decrease of about 48%. The losses were staggering, and passenger traffic dropped by a full 70%. The outbreak of the epidemic has brought huge difficulties and challenges to the national railway system. People began to avoid long-distance travel, and inter-provincial passenger traffic dropped sharply. In order to avoid the inconvenience and risks during travel, more and more families and individuals prefer to use private cars instead of railway travel. Even at the peak of spring festival travel, Many people chose to stay in their place of residence and not return to their hometowns due to various reasons, or restrictions due to the epidemic. All of the above have had a huge impact on the profit and loss of China Railway. Another reason is that the surge in the number of car buyers in China has led to a decrease in the use of high-speed rail. 
The number of cars in China has reached 310 million in June 2022. After conversion, almost every household has a car. When cars become people's primary form of transportation, rail usage decreases. Even though train tickets and high-speed rail tickets are relatively cheap, the overall convenience is still not as good as a family car. Especially when people travel long distances or travel with their families, they will not choose railway travel. We can also see from reality that the train occupancy rate today is far less than it was 10 years ago. China Railway's revenue is far less than its expenditure, which is why China Railway has been losing money. Then some people may ask, will China Railway, which has been in a loss-making state, go bankrupt? The answer to this question is definitely no. From the previous description, it is not difficult to see that China Railway is not a non-profit organization, but an infrastructure in the development process of China. If the railway company was based on profit, it would have lost all its money. When we look at the economic benefits of railways, we cannot just look at losses, but must combine multiple aspects of analysis. China's railway is a monopoly industry. From the perspective of economic benefits, China's railways bring not only internal economic benefits, but more importantly, huge external benefits. At the beginning, we mentioned that to get rich, we must first build roads. In places with convenient railway and high-speed rail, economic development is obviously better, and the labor productivity of enterprises is also obviously higher. From a geographical perspective, railways have effectively promoted local economic development and even introduced talents and technology to certain areas. In addition, railways have also contributed to China's scientific and technological development. The construction of high-speed railways has directly promoted the development of China's metallurgy, construction, precision instruments and even tourism. Even if it is saddled with huge debts, China does not have to worry at all in terms of railway risk control. After all, it is a state-controlled enterprise and state taxes will also subsidize railway construction. Even as a last resort, China can implement a mixed ownership reform system to introduce a large amount of capital, and then the railway debt problem can be easily solved. Although China Railway is heavily in debt, it is not a for-profit enterprise. Therefore, we don't need to worry too much. It's not that we can't afford the railway, but that the railway is meant to serve the people. It is precisely because of these public welfare infrastructure that the lives of the Chinese people will be more convenient and better. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.